Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And I have a couple of announcements. First of all, those of you who are checking on our member site regularly, we're posting new stuff every week. Um, tomorrow we're posting outdoor fitness routines with Chris Dorka. So the weather's getting better. Even in northern climates like Ohio, you can go outside and work out. And uh, Chris is going to show you some fun stuff to do. You don't need special equipment or anything like that. And then next week on June 11th, we're posting an interview with Don Mattis, who wrote a fabulous book called Powered by Plants. And he um, used to eat a paleo diet, eats a plant-based diet now. He's going to talk about all of the ridiculousness about the paleo diet. It's such a great, well-referenced book. I loved reading it. You're going to love the interview. One other thing I'll mention while we're on the topic of crazy diets is um, I'm doing a workshop. Our advanced study course for June 9th is on low carb diets. And I'm basing some of the information on Colin Campbell's new book called Low Carb Fraud. Um, amazing little book, by the way. And uh, I think you'll find this really interesting. We're just going to take apart the claims of these people and talk about what's really going on. So today I want to talk about Alzheimer's disease. It seems like there's a lot of research coming out about dementia and Alzheimer's disease and diet, both good and bad information, some really bad stuff that is terribly misleading, which we'll talk about, but also some good information coming out too. So I want to start with DHA supplements. People who sell these claim that they're needed for proper brain function. And some are even claiming that the pills will help people who have mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, proposing that this might make it better for them. But a new study shows that the supplements don't work. Patients in the, this particular trial that I'm talking about were randomized to take either two grams of DHA every day or a placebo for 18 months. And assessments showed really no difference between the patients who took the DHA supplements and those who took the placebo. There was no difference in brain atrophy either. These patients were um, given MRIs and no difference between the two groups. Now, I won't read the um, conclusion that the researchers wrote. It's in the article that I included that'll be posted in the Health Brace Online Library. But um, the bottom line is that these patients were the target population. They had low baseline DHA. Um, they showed an increase in DHA levels, both in blood and cerebrospinal fluid. And um, they were randomized, and I mean, they met all the criteria for a good study, and there was no evidence of benefit of DHA supplementation on this population. And so this quote I will read you, it says, the hypothesis that DHA slows the progression of mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease was not supported, so there's no basis for recommending DHA supplementation. Humans really don't need to consume supplemental DHA. It's not an essential fatty acid. There are only two of those, omega-3s and omega-6s. And so the body makes DHA um, from, from shorter chain omega-3 fatty acids. Now, it is true that this conversion can be hampered by a number of things, poor health status, poor diet. In fact, conversion can be hampered by as much as 50% as a result of eating a diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol, excessive alcohol consumption, and conditions like diabetes and hypertension. Now, those of you who have been listening to me a long time know that I am all about let's get to the root cause instead of just covering up the symptoms. So instead of taking DHA supplements, how about we lower dietary fat and cholesterol, cool the alcohol consumption a little bit, and address conditions like diabetes so that the body can function as it's intended to. As for preventing or reversing or slowing the, the uh, progression of Alzheimer's disease. What we do know is that the incidence of Alzheimer's disease increases significantly when more animal foods are added to the diet. And in fact, Alzheimer's disease is geographically in areas where we see more animal food consumption. So the best way to prevent this awful disease is to eat a plant-based diet. It's better for your arteries, it's better for your body, and it's better for your brain. And um, right along that same line, um, I want to talk about uh, saturated fat and dementia and Alzheimer's disease. A recently published doctoral thesis from the University of Eastern Finland shows that there is a connection between the food choices that you make midlife and dementia. Researchers analyzed the intake of foods like fruit, vegetables, berries, and unsaturated fat, and also saturated fat and cholesterol and that sort of thing. And the participants who ate the healthiest diets when they were about 50 years old had close to a 90% reduction in the risk of dementia during 14 years of follow-up than those who ate diets that were determined to be the least healthy. The researchers also reported that a high intake of saturated fat was associated with both diminished cognition and impaired memory in 21 years of follow-up. Um, increased saturated fat even increased the risk for those who were the gene carriers, that, APO, uh, that APO, 
APOE4 gene, I could hardly get it out of my mouth there, uh, who are already at risk of cognitive impairment, their risk went even higher as a result of saturated fat consumption. And by the way, Neil Barnard covered this in his book, Power Foods for the Brain, which we used for one of our advanced study courses. He actually showed that um, even those who are genetically predisposed to develop Alzheimer's disease responded positively to eating a better diet and more negatively increased their risk even more when they ate a poor diet. Um, now, one, there was a little bit of good news about the bad habits, and I have to mention it because it was included in the study. Drinking three to five cups of coffee daily decreased the risk when compared to people who drank either less coffee or more coffee. Now, I have to caution you about using coffee for therapeutic purposes because for Alzheimer's disease or preventing or stopping any other disease because we do have an awful lot of evidence showing that there are no magical foods, that it's really the dietary pattern that's going to make the biggest difference. But I couldn't leave that out since it was included in the study. Now, this article is really timely, and one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it is one of the best-selling books on the market right now, I won't mention which one it is, is talking about um, a diet rich in animal protein and fat and that restricts the consumption of healthy foods like grains and fruits is actually the best way to prevent Alzheimer's disease and cognitive decline. And it's simply not true. Um, this study that I just talked about is not the only one that has shown the detrimental effects of saturated fat on brain health. Um, but what makes this one unique is it's one of the few that I've seen that has followed subjects for such a long period of time and evaluated the effect of dietary pattern on the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. So um, I did a, a workshop, an advanced study workshop, on this book that shall remain nameless about eating fat and protein to protect your brain. We were pretty much able to refute everything this guy says in his book, but, but um, every day I'm reading new studies that come out that support the idea that to protect your brain you want to eat a plant-based diet. All right, that's all for now. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you again on Thursday with more news.